Thank you indeed. Uh, let me thank all the friends, colleagues, and indeed uh, distinguished uh, delegates uh, of this meeting representing countries, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you everyone for joining uh, us online for our first virtual side uh, event at the United Nations Statistical Commission. Let me say that we are glad to see all of you and many people joining us today, even if we can't uh, be together in person as we are used to doing so. My name is Risenga Maluleg. I'm the Statistician General for South Africa, and of course, uh, a member of the Steering Committee for Multidimensional Poverty Network, that is the MPPN. The MPPN, which is organized, uh, has organized this event, uh, is a South to South uh, uh, network for more than 60 countries and of course 19 international agencies and it focuses on using better metrics for effective uh, ways of ending poverty in, in many dimensions. Over the next hour and a half, we will hear from presentations and these presentations will come from 14 statistical agencies on how we are using multidimensional poverty indices, that is the MPI, as an official statistical report on the progress towards SDGs and to inform public policy. Indeed, we hope that uh, these presentations will solicit and inspire all of us to think about MPIs and can serve as important policy tools to fight uh, the eradication of poverty in all forms and in all its dimensions. As we have such an exciting selection of speakers, and indeed you will see and judge for yourselves, we must be strict in keeping time. And then uh, my colleague Corinne, from uh, the, the OP will uh, indeed sound a bell when each speaker has uh, 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 one minute left. And indeed, uh, when 10 seconds are there, there will be an intervention to indicate that we would like them to uh, conclude. And uh, we warmly encourage all of you uh, in our audience to be tweeting. And our tweet is hash, hashtag UN52SC. So let's keep tweeting. Uh, I will also be tweeting. Let me apologize that uh, in, in about uh, 30 minutes, I'll take leave of us. And as I take leave of us, I'm going to leave uh, my colleague and friend, Gonzalo, to take care of us. Uh, all, many of us know Gonzalo. He's not new in this. And uh, if you haven't known him, this is your opportunity to make acquaintances with him in person. Having said so, it's because of commitments that came at short notice for me to join my ambassador, the ambassador uh, of South Africa to the UN on matters relating to the UNSC. And uh, the ambassador is together with other ambassadors uh, from the African continent gathering and they would need my input in that meeting. And when your excellency calls you, what do you do? You all make yourself available. Firstly, let me mention that I would like to welcome uh, our colleague from Afghanistan, the Deputy Director General for the Central Statistical Office, that is Asbula uh, Muawid. And in this regard, uh, 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 Asbula has uh, been uh, in charge and has a distinction in being the first country to update their MPI using data collected during the pandemic. Professor uh, uh, Muawad, uh, you have the floor for, for, for all of us to listen to you. Thank you very much, Rezenga. And um, uh, I say a greeting for all of you for those <coughs> opening remarks. I'm glad to be here to share information the, with fellow statistician regarding the Afghanistan offshore MPI. Afghanistan launch uh, AMPI with uh, close collaboration of OFI and UNICEF in 2019, which I'm thankful of them. It was based on 2017 data sets. We have recently updated our MPI using 2020 data. It's my honor to say that Afghanistan is the first country in the world to update its MPI with data during the pandemic. Afghanistan's MPI assess multidimensional poverty in terms of five dimensions, health, education, living standards, work, and shocks. It indicates used to evaluate people, the provision across these dimensions. Many indicators are used 
by many countries, such as food security, school attendance, water and sanitation, clean energy, housing, and unemployment. The AI does have some uh, innovations. For example, we use to generate indicators to reflect adult education, whether a female age 10 or above in the household has primary school or literate, and whether a man is. In terms of key shocks indicators, a person is deprived and they have experience in shock in income, production or security at life at uh, last 20 months from uh, which they have not recovered. These are our indicators, Thailand, Afghanistan, MPI. To our context, providing a policy relevant measures. What are our updates in the past years? I would name three. First, we have submitted our MPI as an SDG indicator. So Afghanistan MPI and related statistics now appear in global SDG data based in indicator 122. Second, the year we both updated the MPI and also went back in time and traced some trends. In terms of trends, in the three periods, the 2013-14 to 2016-17, the MPI indices and intensity of the poverty all decreased statistically significantly as the 13 indicators. This is a different trend than monetary poverty, which increased during the same period. We also found that the poorest groups, rural area children and some of the poorest provinces, and that we most progress. So we not we are not leaving the poorest behind. In 2020, we implemented an income expenditure and labor for survey that included EMPI questions. By the new survey, we found that just under half of the population was MPI poor. The indicator that contributed most to poverty were the provisions in children, child school attendance, female school assist delivery, access to the clean uh, cooking cool food, and high dependency ratio on working adults and income shocks. So each of our dimensions profiles important and visible the provisions. We were a few changes in survey question from 2017. We have organized the 2016-17 data sets to 2020 data sets. There is a statistically significant increase in multidimensional poverty index in time period in Afghanistan. It still, it still seems that the early stage of the pandemic didn't measure a massive increase in poverty. For example, there was a worst case scenario of increases in impact due to the increased food insecurity and unemployment by which three quarter of Afghans might become impaired. So the economic cost of the pandemic are high and continue to be high. It's an extremely challenging environment in which to reduce poverty or even not permit it to increase. But having 2020 data on impact will help us in the year to come to proactive in working to contain and <clears throat> reverse the effect of the pandemic on the poorest sectors. I'm also glad to share that we are planning to the next survey for 2020, 21, 22. So frequency of our data MPI and monetary poverty will increase. My final update from Afghanistan is that as Excellency, the President of Afghanistan presented in September, 2020 UN General Assembly, MPP and side event adding his voice to the topic of the leadership in reducing multidimensional poverty during COVID-19. I would encourage other colleagues to avail on the opportunity of MPPN to, en uh, to engage the amendment colleague working in, in policy with the MPI, so that the statistics we work too hard to deliver a professionalism and rigor are understood and used energetically 
to end poverty in all its form and dimensions, which is SDG one. Thank you very much. Thank you indeed, uh, Professor Mohead. And we need to uh, appreciate the fascinating way in which you have given us the story of innovation on indicators. And of course, it has a, 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 a great impact on the reduction of MPI, including during the pandemic. We now turn to another country in South Asia. And of course, uh, I would like to invite none other than Muhammad uh, Tajur Islam, Director General of the Bangladesh Bureau for Statistics. And of course, they will discuss their work on finalizing the new official measure on multidimensional poverty. Sir, over to you. Thank you, Risanga, giving me the floor. Respected Chair of the Auspicious Side Event on Multidimensional Poverty Indices and SDG Indicator and Official Statistics and a Policy Tool. Ms. Sabina Alkair, Director, Oxford Poverty and Human Development Initiative. Statistician General of South Africa, Mr. Resenga Malulike, statistical leader from different countries and distinguished delegates. Good morning and greetings from Bangladesh Bureau of Statistics. At the beginning, I would like to thank the OPHI for inviting me to this event to share my work developing and implementing multidimensional poverty indices with all of you. I would like to thank Multidimensional Poverty Peer Network for organizing such an important and timely event when Bangladesh is going through to adopt the MPI in official statistics and in the policy planning. Distinguished delegates, you will be happy to know that Bangladesh has included the multidimensional poverty indices in the National Development Results Framework of recently approved eighth five-year plan, which was proposed by Bangladesh Bureau of Statistics in the light of SDG 1.2.2. As the National Statistical Office, NSO, Bangladesh Bureau of Statistics is leading the national statistical system in Bangladesh. Data for this indicator is being generated by Bangladesh Bureau of Statistics. Honorable delegates, BBS has a long history of generating expenditure-based poverty through household income and expenditure survey, HIES. Like others, BBS is very new in the process of estimating multidimensional poverty. With the technical assistance from UNICEF, BBS has initiated the capacity building and data generating activities in its ruling work plan. Under the ruling work plan, Bangladesh Bureau of Statistics and General Economic Division has generated the national MPI with the help of OPHI team. Now Bangladesh is working to generate the MPI as a regular activity. As set of BBS officials have been trained up by Oxford Poverty and Human Development Initiative on MPI, they are now capable to generate the MPI regularly. Moreover, you are aware that Bangladesh Bureau of Statistics has conducted the sixth round of multiple indicator cluster survey, MICS, in 2019, with technical and financial assistance from UNICEF. Both the national and child-focused MPI has been generated using the MICS sixth microdata. We have the plan for channelizing the MPA in the national statistical system for its sustainable level and frequent generation based on a suitable, regularly conducted socioeconomic survey. We are very gratified to OPAMI, OPHI for extending their cooperation for nationalization of MPI into the national statistical system and in the national development plan. 
we are committed to introducing such innovative approaches in the future to provide data support for monitoring the national development plan and SDGs. Honorable Chair and distinguished delegates, I would like to thank all of you for passion sharing of our experience and recent development using multidimensional property measures. Thank you all. Thanks. Let me thank you indeed, uh, uh, Mr. Mohammed Tajul Islam. And indeed, we are looking forward uh, to the launch of the uh, Bangladesh MPI, and that will serve over 160 million people. I now turn to Africa, where Professor Samuel Amin, uh, Anim will explain Ghana's national MPI which was launched last July, and indeed how it, was being, it is being used for reporting towards SDGs. Let me allow you to take the floor. Thank you, Risinga, and thank you, MPPN, for creating this platform for us in Ghana to share with you our experience with MPI. I would go straight to the focus of the presentation, which gives us um, an opportunity to reflect on the resourcefulness of MPI. And if you look at the theme, it gives us a sense that the MPI is not only an SDG indicator as the two uh, previous speakers have talked about it, but it gives us to compare um, MPI with other official statistics, i.e. poverty from a consumption expenditure point of view, and the second thing that the theme lends itself to is the fact that it is not just any statistic, but it is one of the statistics that gives us an opportunity to directly adduce some policy um, arguments from. So on my first slide, what I try to do is give a sense of some loss opportunity over the period. So in Ghana, what got us to rationalize the need for an MPI is to, was to take a stock of what had happened over the past 10 years when we did our last population housing census. So on my slide on the left-hand side, what we see is that we have three surveys or um, computations that have given us an opportunity to look at MPI or poverty as an official statistic. So in 2013, we did a Ghana Living Standard Survey and in 2017, we did the same. And these two surveys gives us the opportunity to measure poverty for, for an official statistic purpose. And then in 2013, we released our first uh, multidimensional um, poverty. What I meant by the loss opportunity is that if you look at 2010 uh, up to now, there are other censuses and surveys that we could have taken advantage of to ensure that at least periodically we could have released um, poverty estimates either as an MDG indicator as at that time or as an SD SDG indicator as at now or as an official statistic over the period. So in the past 10 years, we could have really taken advantage of seven censuses and surveys to regularly update our statistics on poverty as either a, um, a development agenda statistic or as an official statistic. Ghana's computation of the multidimensional poverty index obviously built on the global MPI, but we needed to reflect on how our context would make it, would make it possible for us to adapt it to make it a Ghanaian specific um, MPI. So we had to put together um, 12 indicators, obviously based on the Human Development Index, Stranding Education, Health and Living Standards. And of this, what made it Ghana specific is by the fact that we included some variables such as school lag, which simply defines it as a household that has a member that is behind schooling for two years and replacing child mortality with health insurance because the data set that we're using for the 20, the MPI that we launched last year, didn't have data on child mortality. And also we looked at overcrowding and simply defined as a household that has an average three people or more than three people sleeping in one room. So we had 12 indicators going into the measurement of Ghana's multidimensional poverty. The resourcefulness of multidimensional poverty strands to the extent that it gives us an opportunity to compare it with consumption expenditure poverty. So on the left hand side, what we previously we didn't know is the fact that a lot of the poverty that we were computing, that is consumption expenditure, which our last Ghana Living Standard Survey put it at 23.38, of that 19.27 are multidimensionally poor. 
And what came to us as striking is the fact that the reverse was not the case whereby you have a lot more multidimensional poor people who are not captured as um, consumption expenditure um, poverty. So of the 45.6% um, percent persons that are poor, we realized that 2634 were not captured as consumption expenditure poverty. As was indicated in the introductory remark, what we intend to get here is to get a sense of how poverty indices have changed over time. So on the right-hand side of my slide, using the multiple indicator cluster survey that were conducted in 2011 and 2017, we're able to show how poverty had reduced over the period and clearly incidence of poverty between the six year period, that is 2011 to 2017, had reduced by 9.4% and intensity of poverty had reduced by 2.4%. If you take this into absolute numbers, over the period we saw 14 million people moving out of poverty. So the resourcefulness of MPI is not just the trend analysis, but its ability to help us compare it with consumption expenditure poverty. We move on into the indicators and also do some geographical distributional um, assessment of headcount poverty. And also over time, we realized that of the 12 indicators that we use in measuring multi-dimensional poverty index, 10 out of the 12 indicators saw a reduction over the period. One particular indicator that saw an increase over the period was housing, which we simply measured by the quality of materials that are used for floor and walls. And this is critical for us moving into the 2021 population housing census. So we have the basis showing evidence that over the period there has been that deprivation and going into the census, we'll be in the position to compare what has happened from a comprehensive basis between 2010 and 2021. And on the right-hand side, distributionally, we realized that it was the Northern region that saw the highest headcount of poverty of 80.8. What was more important to us is compare this over the period and see whether the reduction that I earlier on indicated was pro poor or not. We realized that from a, from a geographical point of view, most of the reduction were from the greater Accra region and the Ashanti region, which are relatively less poor regions. So one would hesitate in saying that the reduction in multidimensional poverty to an extent was pro poor. So by way of concluding, what we are saying to ourselves as um, Ghana Statistical Service is we are committed to consistently releasing poverty statistics. And between now and 2030, as we mark the end of the SDGs, we would at least track progress in on SDG 1.2.2 and do that at least um, once every two years. And we are starting with our population and housing census where we've integrated all the questions that would help us measure the 12 indicators that I talked about. This would happen this year and next year, we're going to do the annual household income and expenditure survey. So between now and 2030, we are pretty optimistic that we'll continue to track the SDG 1.2.2 at least four times towards the end of the SDG period. And also at the same time, take advantage of that and increase the reporting on official um, statistics. The last conclusion that I want to talk about is the policy resourcefulness of the MPI, specifically the fact that we've started discussions with the National Development Planning Commission on using it as a tool for budgetary allocation. And once you talk about budgetary allocation, you leverage on that to talk about other interventions that are required for you to engage with other government ministries, departments, and agencies. So our commitment is resolute on this, and we look forward to engaging with MPI um, in, the, in the next few years. Thank you very much. Thank you indeed, uh, uh, Prof. Anim. Let me thank you very much for the work that you have done uh, with your team, the work of such rigor, which includes uh, uh, school leg and, of course, health insurance uh, work. So uh, we're looking forward for more work that will continue to make us shine as the MPI network. At this point, I would like to turn to Mexico. And Mexico was the first country to release the measure of multidimensional poverty in 2009. And for those who will remember, uh, the president of Mexico, the former president, uh, was an active uh, member of uh, meeting with us on our side events. And indeed, uh, we have seen other key leaders all over the world uh, uh, in, uh, uh, supporting us in this work. But for this activity, I'm pleased to welcome Julio Santaella, president of the National Institute of Statistics and Geography, who will share with us what has happened in the last decade 
And of course, tell us more about what we should expect next. Uh, my brother, Julio, you have the floor. Thank you very much, uh, Risenge. It's a pleasure. Hello to all the colleagues gathered here. I really appreciate the invitation from the MPN, MPPN to be here once again. Let me just starting by remarking that um, COVID-19 uh, pandemic is taking its toll on the world on many dimensions, on people's lives, certainly, but also in many uh, human activities. And uh, national statistical organizations have not been the exception. In my view, as I have uh, been uh, commenting elsewhere, the pandemic has had at least three major impacts on the production of official statistics. First, on the concepts to be measured. Second, on business continuity of uh, statistical operations. And third, on increased demand for additional information. Poverty statistics are no different. Under this view, several questions emerge regarding the impacts from the pandemic. Regarding concepts, we have se several questions. How does the differentiated impact on households arising from the pandemic and the different policy reactions, such as lockdowns, affect MPIs? Do we have a proper measurement of effective access of health in the light of the pandemic? Do we have to consider other novel elements so, such as social distancing or reduced mobility in any way in new measurements? Do we have to give more importance to the digital divide in terms of poverty measure in times of teleworking, home office and home education? Regarding business continuity, national statistical offices must adapt its, their operations to continue the flow of poverty statistics. And in terms of increased demands, certainly policymakers and other stakeholders want to have more timely information on poverty. And they also want to know the different interactions between certain health conditions and poverty aspects that are particularly relevant during the pandemic, such as uh, water availability, overcrowded dwellings, age structures, etc. Now, in the case of Mexico, uh, as you will know, two institutions have a shared responsibility for the multidimensional measurement of poverty. In EGI, the statistical office collects the data and provides the inputs. We are responsible for the business continuity of operations. Our National Council for the Evaluation of Social Development Policy, CONEVAL, defines and constructs Mexico's multidimensional poverty measurement. They are responsible for the conceptual questions. And regarding increased demand of data, I believe that it's a shared responsibility between the two institutions. In the case of Mexico, we have uh, two pillars and six dimensions that are considered in our poverty measurement. Pillar one focuses on household income and pillar two focuses on different measures of deprivation, such as education, health services, social security, the quality of the dwelling, uh, housing services and food security. Now, estimating a poverty is not an easy task, even in normal times. And during a pandemic, it is even more difficult. It requires a lot of data and the obstacles for the collection and processing of data were certainly exacerbated by the pandemic and the lockdowns. In this context, at INEGI, we used all our capabilities and operational experience to ensure the continuity of our information programs despite the pandemic and producing also specific programs to fulfill information additional demands. Regarding uh, operational continuity, we implemented surveys based on telephone interviews, either PATI or CATI, rather than use the, the typical face-to-face -face, uh, modalities, many of them of the PAPI uh, way. The prime example of this, uh, of this uh, continuity is our labor force survey, uh, ENOE, which became a telephone-based uh, 
uh, survey that we call the Spanish ETOE. We also had uh, different uh, new programs or new surveys. Uh, one survey to measure the pandemic impact on businesses, another one to measure the pandemic impact on the labor market and on education, and another to study the pandemic impact on the survival of business, which we call business demography. Furthermore, in 2020, uh, INEGI was able to carry out two key information programs that are substantive to generate Mexico's MPI. First, we were able to uh, undertake the income expenditure household survey, ENIC, and its results will be published uh, later uh, this year in, in July. And we were able to undertake the 2020 population and housing census, uh, publishing the first results last January and the complete results uh, next month. These two programs will jointly po provide the inputs needed to calculate Mexico's MPI at the level of uh, states and even municipalities. In this sense, Mexico reaffirms its commitment to the international statistical community to continue moving forward to have quality poverty measurements so that we can still make progress towards achieving one of the main goals of the 2020 agenda, reducing poverty in all its dimensions. Uh, thank you very much. Let me take this opportunity to thank you very much, uh, my brother Santaella, and indeed uh, Mr. Santaella, and of course uh, you have indicated how you are re vetting to how Mexico will update the MPI using census as well as income data. And of course, uh, this will be looking at the issues of post uh, pandemic work uh, in the new normal. We now head back uh, to Asia uh, where we'll have the chairperson of the Mongolian National Statistics Office, uh, Badvadia, and of course, uh, uh, Badmumu who will lead us to discuss their work on measuring multidimensional poverty, considering different population context. Uh, kindly have the floor. Um, of course, uh, we keep on running from different parts of the world. So, but Vada, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Mr. Usenga. So first of all, I would like to extend our sincere gratitude for allowing us to share our experience in uh, developing MPI. As you know, the Mongolia is committed to achieving SDG goals. So in that regard, the Parliament of Mongolia has adopted the sustainable development uh, uh, vision in which uh, there's a particular goal to end poverty by 2030. So to, to reach this target, we have need to have a credible uh, poverty measuring system as opposed to traditional uh, single metric system. So since 2019, the Mongolia has been developing a, a multidimensional poverty index uh, with assistance from the ADB and the UNDP. So after several rounds of discussions, uh, we have developed a uh, the first the MPI measures with five dimensions and 18 indicators. So basically uh, the methodology was developed from the, the National Housing Social, Household Social Economic Survey based on the, from the data from the 2010 to 2018. And also we have conducted additional uh, pilot survey, uh, which is a nationally representative to uh, in which the, the multi-dimension. So national MPI that we have identified uh, is based on the, the, the national characteristics. And there are several indicators uh, which is uh, different from the international ones. So I can mention like uh, three examples here. The first one is the use of the, the clean energy. So due to the Mongolian climate and then traditional nomadic culture, the use of uh, wood and the animal dung in, uh, to make a fire is uh, at the national uh, MPI indicator is not uh, uh, indicator of the 
uh, de deprived uh, because uh, the traditionally people in Mongolia preferred the use of the wooden bag to cook the, their food because they think it, it tastes better and then it's more like traditional way. The second uh, case is the the ordinary pit latrine is considered as an improved uh, toilet and international standard, but the, in our national standard, we put the uh, ordinary pit latrine as a, uh, as a, as a, as a deprived uh, classic classification. And third one is uh, the, uh, the international one uh, used the, use the housing indicator in terms of the dwelling type, but uh, at the national NPI, NPI, we use the the housing uh, measures in terms of the the adequacy of the housing material, whether it's uh, uh, it's uh, enough to. So since our uh, uh, since our uh, the national NPI was developed from the National Housing Socioeconomic Sur Survey. So we can make a comparative status uh, between those two. So from now on, we are planning to uh, calculate the MPI this year. We plan to make this uh, MPI measurement uh, in, a, in a regular basis. Uh, so first one, we are planning to measure and present uh, the first, uh, first uh, results this year and we're going to be presenting it to the government. But however, due to the COVID-19, uh, uh, we have, uh, there was a difficulty in getting first half of the, of the half, uh, part of the year, we were getting data using the face-to-face the -face interview, but the second half, we moved into the telephone interview. So we had to, before presenting the results or making the calculations, we will have to work on uh, checking the data quality very carefully, but uh, uh, we believe that we'll be able to present and uh, disseminate the results within this year. And then hopefully this will be, uh, we'll be able to uh, measure and disseminate the NPI results on a regular basis. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rusenga. Are you still there? You want me to take over? Myself. I was trying to activate myself. I, uh, I'm still here. I was trying to, to activate myself. Apologies Good. for that. Great, my friend. Yeah. Let me uh, indicate that we are very glad about the progress that we have seen coming out of uh, Mongolia in the terms of the launch of the MPI. And I'm happy now to pass the microphone to my neighbor here. Uh, when we look at uh, Namibia and South Africa, we are neighbors. And they would have even have gathered here and started the side event from this side. But Alex Shimofen is the statistician general and CEO of the Namibian Statistics Agency, will share with us how they have developed their national MPI, including uh, stakeholder consultations from different ministries as well as institutions, and their plans for launching and using it soon. Alex, you have the floor. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Rizenga. Uh, I hope I'm quite audible. Um, yes, yeah, it's indeed an honor really to be here amongst all the colleagues that have advanced with their MPIs. Um, we are the latecomers, but still it's uh, sometimes there's an advantage in uh, uh, in, in entering the market at a later stage because we don't need to reinvent the wheel. Yes, uh, with that, I'm really pleased to share the, um, with, the, uh, with the group in terms of um, where we are at the moment because we are in the final stages um, uh, of developing our national MPI, which we are also planning to launch in the coming months. Um, now, this future timing of the launch is also, it also came at a good 
time actually because it's coming at the backdrop of the time when the Namibian National Human Development Index report was of 2019 was actually launched yesterday by the Prime Minister of Namibia and I'm excited about this. Now throughout the process of developing this uh, the measure we we have maintained our emphasis on including all relevant stakeholders uh, in different stages like uh, Rizenga have uh, alluded to. Uh, we had a technical team that we came up with that, com that comprised of uh, not just the people from the Stat Namibia Statistical Agency, but we also included staff from the Ministries of uh, Finance, the Ministry of Education, Arts and Culture, the Ministry of Agriculture, Water and Land Reform, uh, the Ministry of Urban and Rural Development, the uh, Ministry of Gender Equality, Poverty, Eradication and Social Welfare, as well as the Ministry of Health and Social Services. And of course, the, uh, the ministry which we are responsible to report to, which is the National Planning Commission. And um, you will see that we, most of these ministries are ministries that are also responsible for development and also uh, when we talk about uh, Minister of Gender for issue of uh, living, gender of uh, gender quality and poverty eradication, social welfare, uh, which is issue of gender and, and then also um, the inclusion aspect of leaving no one behind is responsible for that ministry. Um, we also included the academics, which is the, minister, the Namibia University of Science and Technology, the University of Namibia, as well as uh, researchers from the Institute of uh, Institute for Public Policy Research. Now, this approach actually helped us to build a broad base of uh, awareness about the MPI across the different institutions. And our hope is really that uh, it will enable greater take up of, uh, of, of the measure across the government and social and society to come together to address uh, the issue of multidimensional poverty. Now, the purpose of our national MPI is to also guide coordinated policy actions, uh, resources allocations, in order to also guide the national budget when it's tabled. Uh, and also the purpose is to act as a monitoring tool and accountability tool, as well as to complement our monetary poverty statistics. Now the analysis generated will also be used for reporting progress uh, towards both the SDGs and the National Development Plans or the NDPs, uh, as well as the formulation of our next uh, NDP, which is the uh, NDP-6. Now Namibia's National MPI will be composed of uh, 11 indicators uh, as opposed to the traditional 10 and which are course also to the traditional uh, three dimensions of education, living standards and uh, health. And now all the indicators and weights have been discussed extensively uh, with the steering committee to ensure that the country's unique context and priorities are captured therein. For instance, uh, we have an indicator on ICTs, I ICT, uh, which is included, and that indicator will be, will be monitoring the progress on connecting people to essential communication and technology resources. And that indicator also proved to be very uh, essential, especially now uh, with the COVID pandemic. We also uh, included um, an indicator on food security. Uh, to link uh, to, key, uh, to a key target in the current national development plan. Now in the report, um, which is currently being revised, we are taking advantage of many of the features of the MPI. Uh, we are analyzing results, not just at the national level, but uh, we are also looking at differences uh, between the urban and the rural areas which is a very important uh, aspect uh, for us as Namibia. We are looking at the different regions, uh, the sex of household head, uh, which is also uh, another important aspect for us. And then the main language spoken, uh, the household size, uh, as well as the age groups. 
Uh, this, this aggregation also can help us identify those who are being left behind to generate more targeted poverty reduction programs because we do have uh, marginalized groups in the country. The Namibian uh, MPI uses data from our household and income expenditure survey, of which the next one is only in 2022-2023. Now, this measure will be used by, the Namibia, by Namibia to report to SDG 1, and especially 1.22, as we spoke about, and as a monitoring tool for the national development plans, as I've mentioned earlier as well. Uh, with that, I would like to close by sharing the answer, my appreciation for everyone on the technical team in Namibia and the steering committee uh, who has worked so hard to develop this new measure of multidimensional poverty. It has been a truly collaborative effort, really. And we are looking forward to seeing the work, work publicly launched in the near future. I thank you. Thank you very much, Alex, uh, for these remarks. It's so exciting to see all the work on multinational poverty that is happening in this region. Uh, our friend Risenga apologizes, uh, as he said before, he has to run with a meeting with the ambassador, uh, but he will be back uh, to joining us later. So thank you, Risenga. And uh, now I welcome uh, gladly Juan Daniel Oviedo, the director of DANE in Colombia, which has long been at the forefront of innovation in multidimensional poverty measurement, including during the pandemic. Uh, Juan Daniel, bienvenido. Thank you, Gonzalo. Um, I, I wanted to send a warm hello from Colombia to all our colleagues, and more specifically to Sabina, to you, Felipe, Monica, and of course to Mr. Sherman, that um, if you remember last year, we had the opportunity to show some advances of Colombia uh, in the use of the multidimensional poverty index, not only as an official statistic, but also as a tool in order to illustrate public policy against poverty in Colombia. We wanted to share with you in this opportunity Mm, a short presentation that I'm going to allow myself to put in your screens. And uh, I think Gonzalo can confirm that we are seeing the presentation right now. It's, so it, it's fine. essentially, it's fine. in order to be precise, uh, we wanted to talk to you in this opportunity um, about the redesign and some uh, additional estimations about uh, multidimensional poverty in our country. Uh, mainly to remember that we, we are uh, close to celebrating 10 years of using the multidimensional poverty in Texas as a public policy uh, driver uh, against poverty in Colombia. It was in 2012 that the government of Colombia decided to officialize the use of the MPI as a, let's say, dashboard in order to evaluate public policy against poverty in our country. And you remember, uh, very close to the past presentations, uh, we have five dimensions in our multidimensional poverty index. And we have 15 indicators that are displayed in this chart below. And last year, we had the opportunity to share with you that uh, essentially, thanks to the integration of um, the information of the population census and some administrative records, we managed to have a novelty that was to have a proxy of multidimensional multi poverty at the municipality level. But uh, the, our meeting was days before the pandemic and we wanted to see how the multidimensional poverty index could illustrate some targeting strategies, even at uh, a more precise dimension as a street block level. And that's why uh, taking advantage of anonymization procedures and being very rigorous about the confidentiality of information, 
we managed to develop or disaggregate at the urban level the multidimensional poverty measure in every municipality in our country. And for example, uh, in this case, which is an image of uh, the geo uh, vision platform that we have to this uh, measure that is accessible to everybody, not only in Colombia, but around the world at the website of the National Statistics Office of Colombia. And as a matter of, it, uh, of example, the mayor of Colombia, the, uh, the mayor of Cartagena, uh, that you know, an iconic city from the tourist perspective, but that was affected very hard uh, due to the pandemic, had the opportunity to target some uh, humanitarian measures as, uh, let's say, um, some food alleviation programs and some income alleviation programs to a specific section of the city, thanks to the fact that we managed to share the shape files and the information that lies behind this information in order to target some strategies. Together with the disaggregation of the information and the use, the effective use that public policy uh, has exerted of the MPI uh, in order to target some measures and for example, to design uh, unconditional cash transfers that were very, very important in the poverty alleviation of the shock uh, regarding labor income that all Colombian households face due to the pandemic, we are, since we are about to celebrate 10 years of use of the MPI as a policy driver, we are in the redesign of the multidimensional poverty index in Colombia in order to increase the accuracy level and also the relevance uh, in order to take uh, into account new dimensions that could be uh, poverty alleviation strategies in the current situation or even in the post pandemic uh, world that we are going to face in Colombia as access to internet um, for example, in order to update the measures of uh, the uh, living conditions or the physical living conditions that is one of the dimensions of the MPI. And there, uh, uh, we would like to uh, address uh, a question to the audience is, if there, if, are there any trends of the COVID-19 pandemic we should consider, we should take into account into the redesign of the MPI. And in this work, and that we are going to wrap up the redesign of the MPI by the end of the year, we also are trying to go farther in the disaggregation of the multidimensional poverty measures, which is a, a, a strategy or a stream of work about estimating multidimensional poverty measures using satellite imagery. And this was something that we uh, shared with you uh, as a challenge from Colombia, uh, because we need to see how to update continuously the advances of the country uh, in the public policy uh, of poverty alleviation. And you know, population census are every 10 years, living standards are probabilistic examples that we perform every year. And we wanted to uh, uh, face this challenge using alternative sources of information. And we managed, due to the Data for Now initiative of the United uh, Nations Statistical Division and Paris 21, to have access to a continuous satellite imagery of 2018 of our country. And using a, a novel uh, strategies in order to extract information from satellite imagery, we managed not only to disaggregate the multidimensional poverty measure at the municipality level or urban level or a street block level at urban areas, but at every rural section of our country in a very consistent way. When you see the uh, map of Colombia at the right side, we have the MPI at a municipality level, where uh, strong threats are uh, more important uh, levels of multidimensional poverty of our citizens. And in the left, Colombia's map, you see 
that we have in the uh, darker areas a uh, lower level of the multidimensional poverty index, even at the rural level. And that was the main message that we wanted to share with you. Uh, and more specifically, to tell you that uh, Colombia's experience uh, is we are looking forward to share it with all of you and has been a successful experience of how official statistics could go forward and uh, start to be uh, an example of data stewardship, illustrating public policy that in order to fight uh, poverty in our country. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much, Juan Daniel, for this really exciting way to analyze and use multidimensional poverty measures, uh, using it in a very detailed level. And of course, congratulations for 10 years of MPI in Colombia. I now turn to Palestine, where Jawad Al Saleh from the Palestine Central Bureau of Statistics will discuss their national MPI, which was launched last, last year. Please, the floor is yours. Good morning and good evening for everybody. Uh, I will give you a view about the concept of the multidimensional poverty here in Palestine. As you said, we are still at the beginning of measuring the multidimensional poverty. The concept here in Palestine, it is a national concept. Basically, this national concept built on the successful experience of multidimensional poverty measured by some countries, especially in Latin America, taking in consideration our special here in Palestine. Basically, the multidimensional poverty in Palestine consists, uh, consists of two spaces. The one which is called the economic well-being or the uh, well-being space and the social well-being uh, uh, will be in this case. The economic will be captured by the national, by one dimension, the existing national uh, monetary poverty line. Why? The, will, uh, the social will be in, it is a right based approach, which is in you in the concept of the multi dimensional. Uh, in, in defining this social uh, will be in, we followed the, uh, the provision in the basic law here in Palestine. Uh, for the social well-being, we capture them uh, by six groups and the 21 indicators. We cover education, health, employment, housing, safety net and use of assets, and personal freedom. So, as you said, the first national uh, multidimensional poverty was published in the 2019. Why we are going to that? In addition to the reporting for the SDG, we are now working on what is called national poverty alleviation here in Palestine led by the Ministry of Social Development. This strategy basically is built in the framework of the multidimensional poverty. Nowadays, because to cover the impact of COVID, we are in the field collect, uh, collecting a new data by uh, uh, conducting what is called the high frequency survey, which is basically a socio-economic survey to capture the impact of COVID here in, uh, in Palestine. I hope we are in the final stages of data collecting. I hope this survey will help us to update the, the MPI here in Palestine and even help us if there is any possibility to add the new indicators for these dimensions to be relevant and uh, capture the impact of COVID in the state of Palestine. I will stop here and thanks for all of you. Thank you very much, Mr. Saleh, for presenting an MPI with such innovative indicators such as minimum wage and women's financial and economic empowerment. Thank you very much. I'm pleased now to welcome Mercy Kanyuka. Commissioner of Statistics at the Malawi National Statistics Office, who will talk about her team, how her team is developing an MPI to inform policymaking. Thank you very much, Nancy. Uh, good evening, Chair. I may so be represented by myself. I'm Jameson Dawara, Director in the National Statistics Office in Malawi. Mrs. Thank you. Another meeting. 
Uh, good evening. Uh, Malawi has recently launched Malawi 2063, the vision of which is an inclusive, wealthy, and self-reliant nation. And the resolution brings us, we as Malawians desire and resolve to be an inclusively wealthy and self-reliant industrialized upper middle income country by the year 2063, so, so that we can fund our development needs primarily by ourselves. The ongoing monitoring and evaluation of Malawi 2063 will be very will be key. The implementation process shall ensure that our aspirations are aligned to what is achievable within the spreaded period. We shall also ensure that adequate capacity is built and aligned to the interventions in the medium term development plans and sector policies. As we seek to shift the country's narrative way away from poverty reduction towards wealth creation, tracking the lived experiences of countries' citizens remains our crucial importance. Malawi has a strong track record of poverty measurements with regard to monetary poverty. Malawi poverty estimates are generated using socioeconomic data <clears throat> from the integrated household service that have been conducted by the National Statistics Office since the late 1990s. These are matopic sector surveys and used to be conducted once every five years, but now are being conducted once every three years. To complement this measurement of mon monetary poverty, NSO, with support from UNDP and technical assistance from OPHI at the University of Oxford, has embarked on a collaborative process to develop a national dimensional poverty index for Malawi. Following the initial consultations and scoping activities, the process was launched with a consultative stakeholder engagement workshop in March 2020. Inputs from a wide range of stakeholders drawn from government ministries, development partners, and agencies, as well as civil society and academia, facilitated the early discussions about potential dimensions and indicators that should define our understanding of my dimension property in Malawi. Inspiration and guidelines is defined an appropriate and relevant measure for Malawi has also been drawn from various policy documents, including the Malawi Growth and Development Strategies, the Poverty Reduction Strategies. The rigorous and intensive process of developing the national MPI, which has been guided by and led by the Minister of Economic Planning and Development, has recently seen the structure of the national MPI being approved by the steering committee. And work is currently underway to finalize the full technical report leading to the launch of the national MPI in the coming months. Importantly, the underlying data for both the monetary measure of poverty and the dimension measure of poverty are found in the same data source, the integrated household survey. This allows for the real complementary, complementarity of both measures to come to the fore as we will be able to derail, to detail and profile those individuals who are poor according to one or both measures. This will be better equipped. This will better equip policymakers in understanding the lived experiences of the poor in Malawi. How this experience may differ from area to area or from group to group, and therefore how best policy should be shaped and implemented to effect meaningful change. Finally, going forward, the Malawi MPI will be launched in the they will be launched, included in the national voluntary report and will be a key indicator to track progress towards achieving SDG1. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Jameson Nadbala, for sharing and, and congratulations on the work that uh, you and your team have done. Uh, this is remarkable. Thank you very much. We're going to switch uh, some of the countries now. And now I would like to welcome Mr. Claire Dennis S. Mapa, national statistician at the Philippine Statistics Authority, which has had a very precise and professional approach to its MPI across many years and has reported it to the SDG 1.2.2. Uh, please welcome. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone. The Philippines commands the organizer of the side event on multi-dimensional poverty indices at the 52nd session of the UN Statistical Commission to highlight and discuss the global efforts towards the development of an innovative poverty measurement based on national context. A very timely discussion 
as the COVID-19 pandemic made each one of us more vulnerable or deprived on certain aspects. The Philippines recognizes that poverty is multidimensional. Aside from income, individuals or families may be deprived of education, health, living standards, and employment, which are not captured by income poverty alone. Such are the basic and essential amenities to life as embodied in the Social Reform and Poverty Alleviation Act of the Philippines. This, in 2018, the Philippines joined the Global Initiative to develop a multi-dimensional poverty index, an index in vision to complement the country's official income-based poverty statistics. On the same year, the first estimates for the 2016 and 2017 MPI were released based on the initial MPI methodology developed with the assistance and guidance of the World Bank and the Oxford Poverty and Human Development Initiative. The Philippines, through the Philippine Statistics Authority, released the first set of MPI estimates for 2016 and 2017, the purpose of which is to solicit feedback and comments from stakeholders of poverty as inputs to the development of an official MPI methodology. Currently, we are refining the MPI methodology to consider other relevant indicators, taking into consideration the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. The efforts take advantage of the expertise of the members of the Technical Committee on Poverty Statistics to ensure the methodology is vetted and rigorously crafted. This will enable the creation of appropriate poverty-related policies and programs in line with the theme of the 2021 UNSC Better Data, Better Lives. Specifically, the MPI will provide relevant information to our policymakers and program implementers that will lead to the achievement of the Sustainable Development Goals Target 1.2, that is to reduce the proportion of women men and children living in poverty in all its dimension according to national definitions by 2030. Recent developments in the country paved the way towards higher granularity of data to support the global SDG indicators framework encompassing principle of data disaggregation during the remaining decade of action for the SDGs. In our country, the approval of the Community-Based Monitoring System, or the CBMS app, in 2019 will cater to the data support of the MPI along with other SDG indicators at the lower level of disaggregation so that no one will be left behind. The CBMS, which is targeted to have its full implementation next year in 2022, entails a census of households undertaken by the local government units with the participation of the community using an accelerated poverty profiling system in data collection, data processing, mapping, and analysis. Thank you for the opportunity to share the country's efforts on the MPI, and we look forward to learning from the presentation of other countries' experiences in their implementation of their MPI. Thank you very much, Mr. Mappa, for this very clear explanation of the importance of linking uh, statistics and policy. But that of the day is what we countries would like to have. Um, we've, we move back now to Latin America, uh, where my friend Ivan Mauricio Ojeda Aguilera, who's the Director General of the Statistics Office in Paraguay, will share information on their national MPI, which is expected to launch shortly. Ivan, bienvenido. Muchas gracias, un saludo cordial eh, Gonzalo, a vos, a, también a Sabina Alcar, gracias por, por la posibilidad y por el apoyo que están haciendo a Paraguay a través de Mónica Pimilla también, un saludo cordial a ese gran equipo de Gofi. Hemos eh, preparado una muy breve presentación sobre lo que ha sido el avance del IPM, del Índice de Pobreza Multidimensional, en su versión paraguaya. Entonces, eh, queremos eh, comentarles de que 
Esto estaba planificado para su publicación ya el año pasado, pero por cuestiones de la pandemia se han priorizado otros aspectos eh, en la producción estadística para brindar lo necesario para que el gobierno también eh, formule e implemente políticas públicas que tengan que ver con eh, mitigar los efectos de la pandemia del COVID-19. Asimismo, el, el proceso del IPM en el Paraguay tiene la justificación de visibilizar carencias que afectan a los hogares en múltiples dimensiones más allá de su ingreso. También la necesidad de reflejar mejor las políticas públicas que no pasan por el ingreso. Y finalmente el enfoque multidimensional de la pobreza que se encuentra reflejado en el primer objetivo de los 17 ODS propuestos por la Agenda Global. Hemos constituido un comité técnico interinstitucional de pobreza ampliado. Realmente el mayor logro que ha tenido esta, esta medida es generar un consenso bien amplio entre actores de la función pública reunidos, 13 instituciones públicas, organismos internacionales como el Banco Mundial, el PNUD, eh, UNICEF, y también investigadores eh, independientes y miembros de la prensa. Por supuesto, en todo momento, eh, acompañado con la capacitación y en la orientación de OFI, también en este eh, momento agradezco a, a Mónica Pinilla, que ha sido la que en todo momento ha estado dispuesta a acompañarnos y a enseñarnos cómo implementar esta medida. Igualmente, el proceso del IPM eh, ha tenido desde mayo del año 2018 hasta la fecha 12 reuniones generales de este comité que ya mencionábamos y también muchas reuniones bilaterales que fuimos hasta las instituciones a explicar en qué consiste este nuevo enfoque de la pobreza multidimensional. El índice de pobreza eh, multidimensional es el complemento a la medición de la pobreza monetaria. En el Paraguay, la pobreza desde su dimensión monetaria se mide hace 22 años y con el IPM vamos a tener esa herramienta complementaria para medir el goce del derecho también en cada uno de los aspectos de la, de la multidimensionalidad. Ahora bien, hablemos de cuáles son las dimensiones que se han elegido para eh, la construcción del IPM. Son el, en la parte de educación, lo que tiene que ver con la asistencia escolar, la escolarización atrasada, años de estudio, en el tema de trabajo, la desocupación, la subocupación, entre otros elementos, en, el, en la dimensión de salud y ambiente, tenemos el, las subdimensiones de, o las variables de acceso a la atención médica, agua mejorada, saneamiento, combustible, y finalmente vivienda y servicios, que tienen que ver con la materialidad, hacinamiento, malas prácticas en la eliminación de basura. Todas estas dimensiones tienen su fuente de información en la encuesta permanente de hogares, que se realiza durante todo el año en el Paraguay y tienen una representatividad eh, nacional. Y tenemos cerca de 300 variables en la encuesta permanente de hogares continua. Y llegando hacia el final, eh, les comento de que apuntamos a que el Paraguay se convierta en el décimo país de América Latina en usar la medida y el país número 22 o vigésimo segundo en el planeta. Las acciones, las acciones eh, finales para el lanzamiento son realizar la última reunión del Comité Interinstitucional de Pobreza, ampliado para la revisión final de las estimaciones. Esto está previsto para el mes de marzo. Posteriormente, presentar el IPM a actores claves y a la ciudadanía en general y realizar ese lanzamiento oficial del IPM para el mes de mayo del año 2021, coincidente a la previa del segundo informe voluntario a ser realizado en el marco de las Naciones Unidas sobre la Agenda 2030 que va a realizar el Paraguay. 
Con esto les doy la más cordial, un más cordial saludo, agradecer el acompañamiento de toda la red y de OFI para que el Paraguay también tenga su IPM. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much, Ivan. Let me just summarize quickly what Ivan said. Um, they were thinking of, uh, of launching the MPI last year, but because of COVID, uh, there were some delays. But fortunately, in Paraguay, there, was the, there, there is a technical committee because they are really um, interested in a, in a huge consensus between the stakeholders. So the committee has 13 public institutions, international agencies, and of course, OFI helping along the way. Uh, this committee started in 2018. Um, and of course, MPI in Paraguay is going to complement the income poverty that Paraguay has been, has been estimating over the past 20, 22 years. Uh, and the dimensions of the, of the MPI in Paraguay will be about uh, the education element, unemployment, and other unemployment, uh, health uh, elements, water, sewage, overcrowding, and they are using the household, household survey, which they take along, along the year. Uh, it will be the 10th country in Latin America to use this MPI. Uh, they are having this year their last committee meeting in March. They will present MPI uh, to stakeholders and they will be launching the MPI in May, including this MPI in their voluntary national reports for SDGs. Thank you very much, Ivan. Um, for the last three presentations, we once again head back to Africa. I must congratulate Sylvia Meku for her new role as Director General of the National Bureau of Statistics in Tanzania and invite her to speak of her own work on leading the MPI for Tanzania. Thank you very much, uh, Sylvia. Hi, Gonzalo. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. I'm, yeah, I'm happy to hear that you feel that way. And thank you so much. And I'm here to present the update of the MPI development on the part of Tanzania. Can you allow me to share my screen, please? So first of all, I'd like to give my thank to Ofi for extending this invitation to Tanzania to share our, our update on the development of the National Multidimensional Poverty Index Development. As you know, the MPI is used to, to fill the gaps for measuring the SDG 1.2 that is reducing poverty in all its dimensions. So the index which we are planning to, to prepare will have disaggregation at subnational levels and the decomposition of the index will allow, will allow the government to reach and target special groups like male, female, the children, the disabilities, who are more vulnerable compared to other groups in the population. Apart from that, we also plan to use the NMPI to monitor regional and international commitments. For the regional commitments, we have the East Africa Community Vision 2050. We have the Africa Development Agenda, that is the agenda which, which entails the Africa we want. That is the agenda 2063. And also we are planning to use the NP, N, NMPI as an official statistics, as I said earlier, to monitor national, regional and international programs. We have the five-year development plan two and plan three is already, is already released last week. So 
we will use the NMPI to, on, to monitor those programs. And as a, a policy tool, we will use it to coordinate social policies and target the poorest groups. But also we'll use it for budget allocations and complement the poverty income measures. The NMPA can also be disaggregated, as I said, by different groups, by gender, by age, and this can make the policy planning and monitoring very easily accessible. accessible. And now for Tanzania, we have two types of NPI, the indices. We have the global NPI, which this one is coordinated or produced by the OFI. And this uses the DHS at the global level. And the DHS is conducted every year. And this year also for Tanzania, we have an opportunity to conduct the DHS. So we are happy we will update our global NPI. And for the national NPI, we, are, we have used the household budget surveys. This is the income and expenditure surveys. And we usually do the survey, this survey in every five years. So the, the current one is the one which was conducted in 2018. And that is the one which was used to, to prepare the national multidimensional poverty in the index, but also the HBS was chosen simply because it takes into account the seasonality issues across the year. So let me give you the updates on our side. For Tanzania, we decided to keep the dimensions from the global but we improved the indicators. We, we added some more indicators. So you can find that we have about 13 indicators. So for Tanzania, we have 26 regions and we have by that time of the survey, the, the projected population is, was about 55 million persons. And also, we will disaggregate these results from the dimensions by gender, by age, rural urban, and for each region, sub-region, which in total we have 26 for the country. And also we'll, we have some information at the indicators level. So where are we now? We have a strong national multidimensional poverty technical working group, which is in place and is working. And this constitutes NBS, that is the National Bureau of Statistics, ministries, departments, academic institutions, institutions, and other development partners. And also we have a strong national an MPI steering committee, which also constitutes members from the, the key stakeholders I have mentioned above. But also we have a data says, a data, a household budget survey, which we used for development of the NMPI. And the, through the consultative meetings, which we had in the countries, together with the technical assistance from OFI, we managed it to, to finalize our dimensions and indicators. And also we went far with the team to map all the, the NMPI indicators to the national, regional, and the international programs. And finally, we have preliminary findings and currently we, are, we decided to, to run the estimates into two different cutoff points to see how they behave and also to see the robustness of changing of the cutoff point. So using the cutoff point of 
We have some preliminary results. And from the 55 million people in Tanzania mainland, we found that about 68.4% are multidimensionally poor. And 80% of these poor are population in rural areas. No, let me correct. When you look at the NMPI in rural area, among the rural population, 80% of the people are multidimensionally poor. And when you look at the population in the urban area, almost half, that is 43 or 44% of the population are multidimensionally poor. But more than half of the children, that is children age under 18 years, they are multidimensional or poor. And this is the big group. And when you look at the, the population pyramid of Tanzania, you find that it is a young population whereby most of the population are below age, age, age 50. So you can see the effect of this multidimensionally poor people if they if we don't we don't move on and try to make sure that these people are well covered in the income of the country but again by looking at the indicator level we found that our nmpi is is correlated with financial inclusion that is many people they like they they don't use financial access and also energy use is poor, that is electricity. But again, sanitation is also correlated to our NMPI, issues like insurance and food security. So among the 13 indicators which we have selected as a team, we found that almost five indicators are correlated to our NMPI. So what is our next step? For the time being, I said we did our indicators using the, the ending five-year development plan two, which is going to be finalized by June this year. So the team now is working on reviewing the indicators to match the, the new five-year development plan three, which was launched last week. But again, we need to convene a technical working group and a, an a approval group that is the steering committee to finalize the, these findings which I have shared with you. And also after that, we will move on to write to finalize the NMPI report, but this activity is going on pending the, the final technical working group and the steering committee meeting. But again, the, the anal, ana, uh, analysis team is working to perform the robust, robustness test to see how the results change due to changes in weights or the poverty cutoffs, uh, as I shared, the 33% and the 50%. And this work has been done with close assistance from OFI. And finally, after this meeting and this test are uh, final, we are planning to launch the NMPI report after all the internal approval processing is completed. So let me take this opportunity to thank the OFI, the NMPI Working Group Steering Committee, and our development partners for this pioneer work which we have done up to now. Thank you, Asante Nisan. Over to you, Gonzalez. Thank you very much, Sylvia. Uh, it seems that next year we'll see a blossoming of new MPIs in, in the Africa region. Mm -hmm. Now, let me turn to Angola, which is the country to launch the national MPI most recently, just in September last year. 
and welcome his director, Cheney John, to share their work. Thank you very much, uh, Cheney. Thank you, Mr. Gonzalo Licona. Greetings to. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Greetings to all the director general present in this platform, and also to you once again, Mr. Gonzalo Licona, director of the Multidimensional Poverty Peer Network, and Ms. Sabina Alkaya, director of Oxford Poverty and Human Development Initiative. And um, once again, I'm Shane John, director general of the National Institute of Statistics from Angola. And we came in here to share our experience with regards to the production of the multidimensional poverty index in the country. It's actually quite important to, to mention that Angola is dove in the, in the production of such powerful tools in order to meet the sustainable development goals reflected under the agenda, long-term development uh, strategy, vision of Angola 2025, and also achieve the National Development Plan 2018-2022 objectives, where the end of poverty is one of the main go government priorities, and also for, uh, to achieve the African Union agenda under 2063. Here in Angola, we produce two types of multidimensional poverty index, um, namely, uh, the Municipality Multidimensional Poverty Index, whose source is the 2014 General Population and Housing Census, and the National Multidimensional Poverty Index, whose source is the Multiple Indicators and Health Survey. Both index comprises of four dimensions, namely uh, employment, quality of housing, health and education, health and education. However, the later one, namely the National Multidimensional Poverty Index, which is deemed as official statistic indicator, comprises of 16 indicators, and also its multidimensional poverty line is established at 30%. Both index uh, have been used to target matters of, po of poverty, especially in, in time as days of the pandemic. In general, in 2020, uh, it has been observed that the national multidimension of poverty incidence in the country is of about 54%. The average multidimension of poverty intensity is of 48.9%. People across the national territory experience on average 26.4% of deprivation. The rural area experienced the highest level of incidence of about 88%, and the children under 10 years old of age also experienced an incidence of about 64, 64.3%. In overall, the indicators that most contribute to the results are nutrition, maternal health care, civil registrations, and years of schooling. Nevertheless, we cannot forget also the education and quality of life dimensions, which together contribute to almost 70% of the, of the multidimensional poverty index in the country. As you may observe here in the graph, the southern part of Angola it actually experienced the highest level of incidence in terms of the multidimensional poverty index. Its poverty incidence is of about 70%. Next question, who they've been. Um, so how has the government been using the multidimensional multi poverty index, especially in a time such as this of pandemic, where the level of the multidimensional poor has increased, has increased? First of all, it's actually important to mention that the government has also been restructuring the overall budget design to promote a better allocation of resources and promote a more elaborated and equitable distribution of income in the country. Thus, I'm mentioning here some programs that's been implemented in the country. Namely, we have the integrated intervention plan in municipalities, which its main objective is to promote inclusive growth and reduce inequality among municipalities. We also have the Quenda program, which is a social transfer program aimed at supporting poor families in the country. In general, we have about 1 million and 600,000 600, registered households for such program. We also have the Employability Promotion Program, SPAP, which aims to deliver about 83,000 jobs across the country in 2021. We also have the program which aims to provide guidance and technical assistance to farmers, as well as provision to support the improved seeds and water aimed at increasing production. We have many other programs which we might actually mention or share our presentation later on for further details.
As you may say, the index that we produce here in the country has been of great aid to the policymakers in order to meet the country's main objectives of inclusive growth and sustainable development. That's all that the National Institute of Statistics of Angola had to share with you all. Thank you very much. Obrigada. Gonzalo, your microphone is muted. Thank you very much, Jenny, uh, for, for your insights and also for sharing Angola's MPI data. Uh, so many actors uh, join your important work uh, confronting poverty. Finally, we turn to Statistics South Africa and recognize uh, Nosifo Shabalala, Chief Director of Poverty and Inequality Statistics in South Africa. Uh, Nosi, the floor is yours. Your mic. Um, yes, greetings to everyone. Uh, the statistician general has asked me to convey this brief uh, on the work that Statistics South Africa does on multidimensional poverty measurement in South Africa. Uh, South Africa released the first MPI report in 2014. Uh, we used the census 2001 and census 2011 data we called it the South African MPI because we customized it to the South African context. We added another dimension, which is a dimension on economic activity to the dimensions that are there in the global MPI. We later released another data point in 2016 using a community survey that we conducted that year. From these reports, we learned that um, Multidimensional poverty in South Africa is declining. It declined from 18% in 2001 to 7% in 2016. This we have reported in our SDG report, uh, country report. We learned that the major contributors to the poverty situation in South Africa um, are unemployment and education. In 2016 also, in line with the SDG notion of leaving no one behind, we compiled another report on the youth MPI, focusing on the youth aged 18 to 24. From this report, we also learned that education attainment or lack of it thereof is the major contributor of uh, poverty amongst the youth in South Africa. Early in 2020, we released another report on multidimensional poverty, um, focusing on children aged zero to 17 years. Uh, from this report, we learned that uh, there are high levels of poverty amongst children in South Africa, especially in provinces that are predominantly rural. Uh, we also learned that um, we also learned that the major contributor to this, uh, to the poverty situation of this group, especially children aged five to 17 years, um, is education. And uh, for children aged zero to four years, we learned that the major contributor to the poverty situation is their living circumstances or living conditions. These reports are uh, used, um, have been instrumental uh, in the planning and decision making in South Africa, and also especially now during the COVID-19 pandemic. The statistician general also asked me to indicate that Statistics South Africa is uh, planning to increase the frequency of producing multidimensional poverty statistics in South Africa by um, adding a module on poverty to the existing um, survey that we conduct on annual basis, which is called the general household survey. So the multidimensional poverty statistics we will be able to produce on an annual basis. From the reports that I have been indicating to you, we are basing them on censuses and large scale sample surveys that are periodic in nature. We know that the census takes place once in 10 years, but we are moving towards uh, increasing the frequency of producing multidimensional poverty statistics 
statistics to an annual basis. We are not only talking about uh, increasing the frequency of production, but also reviewing the indicators and the dimensions that we are going to use in this annual uh, South African MPI. We are doing this through a consultative process. We started a consultative process uh, last year, December, we had a two day workshop with various um, um, national government departments where we were discussing uh, the indicators and the dimensions uh, that are to be included in the annual in the annual uh, South African MPI. There are uh, new indicators that are emerging from these discussions that are talking to access to technology, access to internet, other indicators that are talking to safety and security and the environment. Um, we 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 are going so we are doing this so that we ensure relevancy or so that we ensure that uh, the south african mp the annual south african mpi is well aligned with the policies uh, is well aligned with the measurement needs of the sector departments, is well aligned with the national development plan and the medium term strategic uh, framework. Um, we will be compiling a discussion document based on these uh, discussions and engagements that will assist the statistician general as he engages with uh, FOSAT, that is the that is the forum for the South African directors on poverty measurement in South Africa and taking these to the higher structures as well uh, before it is tabled at cabinet. These are the efforts towards getting the South African MPI to be an official measure of poverty in the country. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Nasi, for your important update and good luck, of course, uh, for South Africa in the next steps. And thank you, all my friends. Uh, thank you, you for your creativity and your courage in building a new statistics, for your leadership in communicating to others uh, so we can use um, your inputs. And of course, we all together could re reduce poverty. Thank you for your patience uh, and listening for a total of 14 countries, uh, each conveying their insights with passion and of course, professionalism. Let, now let me give the floor to Sabine al Kair, director of OFI, our last speaker, who, will all, uh, who we all know is an inspiration uh, for our work, uh, who will share quick updates on reporting progress on multidimensional poverty in VNRs and as SDG indicator 1.2.2. Sabina. Thank you so much, Gonzalo, and thank you all of the presenters. It's truly an inspiration to hear your work. And we also know how hard, nosy, how hard many of you have worked behind the scenes to establish a rigorous um, permanent and official statistic of poverty that really meet um, the needs of, of the policy actors. So just two procedural points. Um, one is that in many countries, for example, Malawi and Paraguay, mentioned that they would include the MPI in their voluntary national reviews. And with thanks to Felipe Oroa Clavijo, I just wanted to mention that the number of countries who are mentioning their work on multidimensional poverty in the voluntary national reviews has gone up. Um, and it is a good forum for two reasons. One is you inform the international community about your work. And the second is that you refor inform other colleagues around government who may not um, be as aware of how the MPI work is progressing. And so we encourage you as you move towards the SDGs, which so many of you mentioned, and many of you already have done so, to consider including the MPI as you prepare future VNRs. And the second is that this network um, and under Gonzalo's leadership particularly has supported countries in trying to um, report the MPI as SDG indicator 1.2.2. It's the only indicator of the SDGs for which governments, national governments are the custodian agency supported by UNICEF, UNDP, and World Bank. And what the process is, is different from any other SDG indicator. Staff of the World Bank find the national 
and PI. They validate it with the other institutions and then they write to the SDG focal person in that country requesting that they would validate that the MPI headcount intensity, disaggregation, standard errors, all of that have been correctly inputted, not just for one period, but back in time. And so we wanted to explain this in case you have not yet reported your MPI or for the countries that are about to launch it to encourage you all um, to do so. 64 countries have reported against indicator 1.2.2 a number of them reporting national MPIs, and a number of those countries have spoken uh, today. So uh, this is one space in which your work can be made visible in, again, in the international community for others who may not yet uh, have started the process of developing a, a measure of poverty in all forms and dimensions and seeking to use it as a tool to confront the pain and the um, disadvantages that so many continue to suffer. So thank you very much and back to you, Gonzalo. Thank you, Sabina. Um, it is very important that we, the countries should report uh, uh, to both sources um, because it's a lot of work that we've done and now it has to go through the SDGs uh, process and we have to, to, to show to the world that we are, we are working uh, very hard. So thank you very much. We are about to close uh, this event. Uh, the MPP and, and OFI websites will post a summary of this meeting shortly. So please take a moment to forward this uh, to colleagues who are not with us today, but may be interested. Uh, if, you, if viewers from governments or agencies are interested in participating in this South-South Multidimensional Poverty Peer Network MPPN, uh, please do. It, this is an exciting network and we keep learning all the time. Also, if your country would like to host the side event at the UN General Assembly in September, please do write to the MPPN and OFI team. Uh, thank you very much uh, to everyone for coming. I would like to thank my friend uh, and brother Risenga for the initial chair of this session. Uh, I would like to thank all of you for being here uh, and we wish that our collective work keeps the issue of poverty in front of policy actors in a fresh and rigorous way during this historic pandemic period. And may these efforts and these numbers against the lots start to turn the tide on poverty. Uh, one year ago, we were able to have this side event face to face. We embraced, we talked near to each other we shook hands, we kissed, and I hope we will do it again very soon. Thank you very much for your time, and thank you very much for being part of the MPPN. Thank you, Ofi. Thank you, Sabina. Thank you to all of you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Could we ask uh, speakers to turn on their cameras uh, just to say goodbye and, and take a picture before, before we leave? That's wonderful. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, thank Felipe. You for it's all always work. for thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you to all of you. <laughs> Thanks again, uh, Felipe and all of you. Thank you to Freya and Corinne and thank all of the OFI team. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you to all of you.